Jets will get their hands on the football first. Here at Arizona Stadium tonight, they are expecting a crowd in excess of 52,000. And uh, more than likely, they'll get here. We're underway. In the end zone, waiting for it is Mr. Taylor. And that's how we'll get in the way with Arizona taking the ball at their own 20-yard line. Dan White will lead the Wildcats tonight. His season stats from last year, 103 of 207. 11 TDs, 7 interceptions, and quite frankly, Coach, his last two games last year were the most impressive, both at Arizona State's Sun Devil Stadium. Well, as far as yardage acquired, the last four, in fact, his last five ball games, Arizona's been over 400 yards in total offense. That's impressive, but he'd like to improve his pass completion uh, percentage of 50-some percent. He'd like to be up there in the 60s. Antoine Carter on first down, picks up nine yards. James McIntyre, who was a busy boy in Gainesville last week, comes up from his strong safety position. The Arizona skill positions, White, Dice, Taylor, Carter, and Patterson. Jason with a good game blocking and running last week down at Tech. And that's the big difference in Arizona's offensive alignment. Uh, Patterson is a true fullback. Last year they ran with Billy Johnson, who really was a halfback playing fullback. So they got a little more blocking. You'll see this offensive set more from Arizona than any others. And the linemen were the big heroes last week. They give straight ahead. Arizona's got enough yardage for the first down. Whole different start tonight as opposed to, what, nine nights ago down on Georgia Tech's uh, very hard turf. <laughs> the first fumble, and all of a sudden Georgia Tech was ahead. Artificial turf, and more, more schools are going to this. All right, there you see the Aggie defense, Manuel Gray and Liberton in the linebacker core. Foster, McIntyre, Walton, and Beasley. McIntyre and Walton last week, between them had 24 tackles last week. That's too many for a defensive backfield. Well, they were chasing those seven pass receivers at the Florida head. White on first down. Pitch to Carter. Picks up four yards before he's mashed by several, led by Wayne Waltower, 6'2", 285-pound junior. There you see Antoine. A lot of self-confidence in Antoine after the tough time of it he had down in uh, Georgia, and the coaching staff very supportive. And quite frankly, you can jog, you can ride the bicycle, you can lift weights, but until you play football, <laughs> you're really not practicing for football. And he didn't get to play down at Camp Cochise. Arizona split their backs. That's their first set. We've been running in the I formation, and we'll see most of that as their base set this year with a big fullback. Carter gets the ball again. Good blocking on the right side. Surges ahead for another three yards. Ole Breton with the stop. Well, I think there's no secret in this ball game that in probably any, any ball game that Arizona's going to play, they're going to come out and run the football. They're going to make you defense them. And Make sure you can handle them there, and then they'll throw the football. But they want to establish the run. You might wonder if Arizona, after uh, last week's showing down at Georgia Tech, is going to key on any particular facet of their game. According to Dick Tomey, everything's open for discussion right now. Back to the eye formation. This time, the first give to Taylor. Gary with a good block. He's got yardage for the first down. That is his first carry of the season. Tony Gray, number 44, the stop, the middle linebacker for the Aggies. Well, here's a young man who didn't get to play down at Georgia Tech, and he's back. Both Taylors, the twins, have been injured uh, pretty much in preseason. Uh, Carey didn't play much either last week. He did uh, receive the kickoff once, but that's the only possession that he had. So they're both expected to play tonight. All right, Patterson at fullback and play action. White to throw. Looking for Dice, and Dice has got the ball. And Dice is going to go in. Danny White is one for one passing tonight. He's also thrown for a touchdown. Richard Dice with the 57-yard reception. He just got one step on Donald Beasley. And it's 6-0 uh, Arizona, that simple. 
Well, New Mexico State has seen a lot of touchdown passes in the last two weeks. Florida threw seven touchdown passes against them in the first half. And Arizona starting off like they may have a chance to do the same thing. Steve McLaughlin rolls the dice and makes it seven. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium. The Wildcats are out in front. 7-0. Dice just running an out pattern. Catches New Mexico State in man-to-man uh, -man coverage. Dice about 6-2. Now wide receiver, Arizona's only thrown to the wide receiver. That's the third time this year. Georgia Tech, they threw four to the, ha to the uh, fullback and the four to the tight end. And they'd like to incorporate their wide receivers. Scoring drive, six plays. They went 80 yards. It only took them two minutes and 38 seconds. Last year when Arizona opened in the stadium against the Texas El Paso, Kerry Taylor ran the ball down to the one yard line of the kickoff and Arizona scored in their first possession. They do it again here tonight in the rain. Coming down a little bit, a little bit more, how should we say this? <laughs> With a little more passion, I guess I would say. Hardy crowd out here tonight though. Well, the rain should probably help Arizona, a running team with big offensive linemen and experienced. Uh, New Mexico State really has to rely on the pass. They're about 67% pass. And and 33% uh, rushing in Arizona is just the opposite as far as offensive philosophy is concerned. Beasley carries the ball, doesn't make it quite to the 20-yard line. As a matter of fact, he's down at the 18. So New Mexico State starts two yards shy. Here's see Donald Beasley. Here's Cody Ledbetter coming onto the field right now. Ledbetter, he's a junior out of Stephenville, Texas. And what a weekend he had last week down at uh, Florida. Despite facing a very good defense, he hooked up for three touchdown passes. Not all that easy to do in Gainesville. Well, they couldn't run against the Florida Gators. And uh, so far, they're not running well against the Arizona Wildcats. Off the right side, they pick up a couple of yards. Sean Harris, the inside linebacker, making the stop. Well, Ledbetter threw for 50% last week. He was a starter, returning 11 starts last year for the Aggies. That's an experienced group right there. All those guys played last year. Interesting comment about all those guys. The Arizona coaching staff said all of their offensive skill position players could play in the Pac-10. And they've only got real, really one veteran on this line, Gerald uh, Slovacek, their center. Through the middle they go this time, picking up a couple of yards. Going to bring up third down in about uh, five. Thomas Demps. Number 25 made the stop for the Wildcats. Demps was credited by the coaching staff as having the best outing of any of the Wildcats last week. Well, Demps has taken over for Sean Jarrett at that uh, quick linebacker position. You see him lined up on the line of scrimmage sometimes. He has to drop into uh, zone coverage on, uh, on defense. He has to be able to rush, so it's a, a great responsibility at that position. Toss, sweep, and met in the backfield. Brandon Sanders comes up. They let him make decisions. And that time he felt the run was coming. He came up from his strong safety position and got into the Aggie backfield. So it'll bring up a punting situation for New Mexico State. On that Arizona scheme, uh, Brandon Sanders is a strong safety. And really, he becomes a linebacker, an outside linebacker in that position. In that case, he was coming. He was blitzing. Well, last week, uh, the punter, Chad Zecha, was very busy, <laughs> to say the least. He's out there again, gets off a nice spiral. Dice is going to let it bounce. And the Aggies relieve the pressure at the 40-yard line. Wildcats will have pretty good field position. 
Well, they do, and uh, both punters on these two teams only averaged 27 yards a kick last week, so they both would like to improve their stats in this game. They're both veteran punters. Both were regular punters last year for their respective teams. You see Jim Hess. He's in his fifth year at New Mexico State. 14 and 30 overall there, but his last two seasons, after taking over a program that was without much value, to be perfectly honest, he's put together a 6 and 5 and 5 and 6 season consecutively. Lone back for the Wildcats on first down is Antoine Carter. White at quarterback. And here's Antoine. Name, yes, they'll mark it. An 11 yard pickup, first down, Arizona. Two tight ends for Arizona with a single back. You'll see pretty much the same set, offensive sets from Arizona. They've changed their shotgun set a little bit, but primarily. Once again, the right side, Joe Smigel and Warner Smith tying them up. Manny Ott, number 50, did a good job of boxing in the linebackers there. Antoine's got a first down, and the Wildcats in the eye formation. Charles Miles, a fullback. Arizona goes straight ahead. And a pickup of about two. Manny Ott was probably the only uh, non-starter that got much playing time last week against Georgia Tech. He plays for anybody in that offensive line. He was a center. And now playing guard and tackle on that particular play that you mentioned. He pulled to the right and led that play for some good yardage. I think Arizona's concerned a little bit today, and maybe not as much depth on the offensive line because they've had some injuries. And Kagawahi is not playing right yet. Maybe they'll get him back. They lost Shaska. So they've lost a little bit of depth that they had last year. But they got that first five, six players very experienced and also big. Miles and Carter, white to throw. Threw it right into coverage, trying to force it into Dice. Parrish Foster, the cornerback, was with Richard Dice. There you see Parrish. He's a senior, five foot eight, 180 pounder. The experience, the secondary for uh, New Mexico State only has one starter back. Foster was a backup last year. And so they're very inexperienced, and they really took a beating at uh, Florida last week. But we're not sure how good that Florida team is. They come back today and beat Kentucky by a worse score than they beat New Mexico State. So and they were dropped from the number one position in the polls. <laughs> they might go down again another two spots. Wide out of the shotgun on third down. Lots of time. Through the middle to Dicey goes for the first down. There was some question before the start of the season, and you alluded it to a, a moment ago, and that is the Wildcat wide receiver court. Dice, probably by the time he's out of here, is going to set a lot of records. He's a great, he's got the good size as, as a wide receiver, a little bigger than most wide receivers, at about 6'2", very athletic kind of a guy. He's, you know, he's a punt receiver for Arizona also this year and did a great job against Tech in that responsibility. And so we've seen him early in this ball game catch two passes. It's a nice big target. Little counter attempt that time. The give was to Gary Taylor. You might notice that four looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? Yeah, that's uh, Chuck Levy's old number. Gary uh, got a chance to pick it up after Mr. Levy moved on to the National Football League. On the stop, by the way, number 44, Tony Gray, the middle linebacker. That is his second tackle tonight. Eight minutes, 20 seconds remain here in the first quarter. Arizona up 7-0. And now they're driving on their second possession of the home season. You see New Mexico State in a little of the Arizona scheme or alignment as far as defense is concerned. Carter still on his feet and knocks forward. Another first down, this time inside the 15-yard line. More fine blocking from that offensive line, Coach. They were the ones exalted for that last drive down in uh, Atlanta last week. And I think that's why Arizona's going to be so hard to play. As Pac-10 coaches watch these tapes, they know they're not going to get the ball very much or very long time on offense because Arizona's going to get it on offense and just keep it and grind it at you. So when you get the ball on offense, you've really got to be very productive. You're going to be successful against Arizona. Carter again straight through the middle for a few and then topping that off playing into Arizona's hands of course is the fact that they're vaunted to defense will be well rested. <laughs> Most of the pack teams really throw the football a lot so that means you're out awfully quick unless you complete some passes and so your defense is on the field for long periods of time and fatigue is a factor as those big offensive Arizona linemen are going to be driving at you. So I think the big plus for Arizona this year over last year, they're going to be real physical on both sides of the football, not just on the defensive side. All right, 
Patterson and Carter in the backfield. The give to Antoine off the right side. Powers inside the 10 and a flag across the field. Well, that far away from the play is probably going to indicate some kind of an offside penalty or illegal procedure. The tackle is made by Beau Le Breton and offside against New Mexico State. So Arizona picks up five yards. New Mexico State changed their defensive alignment uh, over last year. They went to a 4-3 alignment. And on occasion, they even call their defense the Arizona defense when they shift to what looks like a five-man line or when they flex their outside linebacker like Arizona does with depth. So you, you see, as you watch the alignments, uh, we'll see that often. Uh, it's an offshoot of maybe the 40 defense or 46 defense or bear defense as it's referred to. So they've changed their alignment. Arizona stayed pretty much based with what they did last year. In fact, they feel they're probably a little more flexible. They don't have to flip-flop as much because of uh, the athletic ability of the experienced players they have back. All right. On second down and short, Carter stumbles, and down he goes. I believe he tripped over the, one of the hind quarters of one of his linemen that time. Or Tulu Fumeli, number 55 for Arizona, big senior who started on defense. A lot of those Arizona linemen, Warner Smith, Tulu Fumeli, Misham, Hisham, El Mustab, all started on the defensive side of the football. Those guards, in fact, all three of them. And now as they've grown and matured, they become offensive linemen, and there you saw Pulu pull to the left, and he really had a pathway for Antoine Carter, but the Carter tripped before he could uh, get into the end zone. All right, this brings down a third and three. Patterson and Carter in the eye. It gives straight ahead to Patterson. He is just shoved forward. We'll see where they spot it. I believe he'll be maybe uh, just shy of the first down. You'll notice tonight when Patterson runs the ball, he ran onto the line, number 46 there, you see, Jason. And then all of a sudden, he was just shoved, surged forward. Well, Patterson's about 5'11", 232 pounds. Played a little bit last year. In fact, he played quite a bit. Had 25 rushes in that last ball game. He's from Santa Monica, J.C., and he's probably... Uh, you know, your prototype fullback, a little squatty body, and uh, good blocker. Well, the crowd wants the Wildcats to go in for seven. The coach wants to talk about that decision, and why not? So we're going to take a timeout. We'll be back to Arizona Stadium very soon, where the Wildcats lead the Aggies seven points to nil. the fans who are braving the elements tonight. Would you believe early September and a driving rainstorm that began about 15 minutes prior to kickoff and this hearty and very much motivated Arizona crowd wants the Wildcats to try to drive it in. It's fourth and inches. The ball on the four yard line or just shy of it actually. In Arizona with uh, two tight ends in there formation with Patterson at the fullback. Carter, first down. Touchdown! <laughs> well, how would you like to have Antoine Carter come in into your living room? Well, how about right now? Good blocking once again, Coach. A good sweep, and Arizona likes to pull their guards. And you see Warner Smith, number 64, 
leading that sweep. Mr. McLaughlin in to attempt the 14th point. His bid is successful. And that's a good way to describe the Wildcats so far tonight. They've had their hands on the ball twice. They've come up with two touchdowns. And with 5.13 left to go in the first quarter, the Wildcats are out in front, 14-0. Did you say Arizona State up 3-0? New Mexico State Aggies once again on fourth and short yardage. Tomey and the Wildcats go for it, and Antoine Carter picks up six. Well, Pat did the uh, Arizona power sweep with Warner Smith, senior from uh, Sam Manuel, all-conference second-team selection last year, all-conference honorable mention his uh, sophomore year, and uh, should have a great chance of making that all-conference first team this year. McLaughlin kicks into the rain and to the wind. The ball down on the five to the 10-yard line, and down at the 15. And that time, they used their short flanker, Lucius Davis. That's one of the cornerbacks on Arizona's uh, specialist team. He's probably about number three right now. Junior college transfer, Stewart. And uh, down there quick, has great speed. He'll probably be a starting quarter cornerback next year, this year. May not get a lot of playing time as a cornerback, but he should get a lot of time on special teams. And Dick Tomey likes that. Derek is to be congratulated. Meanwhile, the Aggies try to go on the ground, attempt to sweep it to the right side. They pick up a couple. Brian Pizzula. Pizzuza. Pizzula. We'll get this right yet. Pizzula. That's their all-purpose back. He right. can catch it. He can throw it. They really like him. Kickoff return, he's uh, out of Fullerton, California. He's a senior. Aggies have not really had good field position yet, and the ball kind of wet. As Arizona shows, you know, a six man on the line of scrimmage. They got the strong safety up there quick. Let better to throw. He's got his favorite target open. And the ball's complete to Lucius Davis. Davis was a preseason all Big West selection by the Sporting News. And as we mentioned before, he had three touchdowns last week at Gainesville. The incredible story, he, like so many of these Aggies, was a walk-on. <laughs> they either got walk-ons or junior college transfers. They have very, very few true freshmen. They have a great true freshman out of UTEP. I shouldn't say UTEP, I should say El Paso. Uh, a linebacker that's uh, played well for them early, but mostly a junior college program. But Lucius just uh, came on his own and uh, has been in the program for three years. Will probably break all the Aggie uh, pass receiving records before he's through. All right, well, he gets the Aggies a first down. They go to Allen uh, Davis again right away. This time he picks up seven or eight yards. His second consecutive reception. Really right now to give Ledbetter some extra protection. They're just sending the tight end straight down the field, 10 or 12 yards, and then Lucius is the only other receiver. They're keeping in everybody else to block. Oh, the rain does wonders for the hairdo. <laughs> Three minutes, 28 seconds into counting here in the first quarter. Home opener for the Wildcats, up 14 nil. Here's Ledbetter. And trouble, out of the pocket. And he has enough for the first down. That's what's make, made him a very effective quarterback. He's about 6'2", but he's very, very mobile. We should see some option out of this Aggie club a little bit later, but he's their leading rusher as well as their leading pass well, yeah. thrower. It's interesting. Everybody talking about the 37 yards net he got last week, but this young man had actually 62 yards rushing gross last week, and they netted it down. He lost 21 on various... Sack plays, etc. Good runner. Picks up another first down, and the Aggies are near the 50. Ledbetter. Drops back, gonna go deep this time. And no flag.
flags. He threw in a double coverage. Both Bowie and Claudius Wright were in the neighborhood. And that ball hung just a little bit too long. He's throwing with a wind at his back here in the first quarter. Yeah, I think Ledbetter showed a, a strong arm here as we watch right, right corner or boundary corner for Arizona. Plays the wide side of the field. Not the boundary corner, but the uh, field corner. Mike Skirlock's getting a start today. He did not start against Georgia Tech. Uh, uh, Ray has, uh, did not practice a lot this week, but uh, Mike has had a good week and has moved in and uh, assumed that starting position at the left corner, what they call the boundary corner. You see him over there pressing that wide receiver right now. And the penalty flags fly, and could it be they took too much time? We'll see. And it looks that way. Jeff Springer, the referee. All right, repeat the down. Second down and a 15 this time. Boy, it's windy in our little neighborhood too tonight, isn't it? It's wet and windy. <laughs> All our stuff is having a tough time staying close. The Aggies did uh, almost win the conference last year. They had a chance to win it at home in their last game and got beat by Utah State to finish second. Otherwise, could have gone to a bowl game. Ledbetter to throw again, completes it. And the ball is fumbled and recovered by the Wildcats. I think they're going to call it down. I'm not sure they're going to call it incomplete. Well, there was a great deal of controversy in Atlanta about a pass that may or may not have been caught. Thomas Dimps was in the right place, the intended receiver. David Osborne. Let's take another look. And this is a veteran. Good receiver, good sized, good hands. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Ah, he's got it long enough. That's a completion. Yeah, I would reckon. But the officials don't have a chance to, uh, to see it again. But Osborne caught 27 passes last year. That's his second pass. Well, you can't count that. On third and 15. Let better out of the pocket. Gonna rush it himself. Still on his feet, he's got the first down. He's still going and finally belted. He fumbled, but it's recovered by New Mexico State. And what you know, David Osborne <laughs> got the recovery. Well, there you saw Ledbetter again. He's got great speed. He outran Kozar, who had him cornered as he broke out of the pocket, but he's given Arizona some trouble. All right, Cody Ledbetter, a junior. Here comes Kozar into the picture. Can't quite get there. Brandon Sanders misses him. Thomas Demps misses him. And it's Sean Harris, Arizona's great inside linebacker, catching him from behind. That uh, footage is not going to sit well at uh, tape time. Ledbetter on the option. Keeps it. Falls at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Now Mike Skirlock, number 22, playing the boundary corner in that particular play. Really played the quarterback well. He had him at an angle where he could not pitch the ball to his trailing halfback. He had to keep it, and he drove him into the uh, pursuing Arizona defense, and uh, no gain on the option to the short side. Jimmy Sprott came up with the stop for the Wildcats. Boy, there's another good young player out of uh, Lakeside. Small town, but he runs very well. Sophomore, redshirt, freshman, rather, I should say. I think he's going to be a good one. Led better to throw. Over the middle. Intercepted and dropped. Kevin Gosar. A young man who's developed into one of Arizona's great stories. He's a walk-on from Pinedale High School in Wyoming. Most of his family played football at Wyoming. He decided to come down here and be a Wildcat. Now he's starting. Wyoming recruited him, but then they wanted him to walk on. They didn't want to give him a scholarship. So he said, hey, I'm going to Arizona. But he had some brothers, great athletes at the University of Wyoming. Brother played down here in the Copper Bowl a few years ago. Third down and 10 at the 35-yard line. Ledbetter, straight drop back, in trouble, down he goes. Teddy Bruschi put on most of the pressure. Yeah, the Wildcats, their fifth sack of the season. Jimmy Hoffman was in the vicinity as well. well Teddy Bruschi coming off a just unbelievable year. He was the Fiesta Bowl's most valuable player. He was an all-conference selection. He led the Pac-10 in sacks. He led the Pac-10 in tackles for loss. 
And he's still only a junior. Could be here another year. Secha on to punt once again. This time he strokes it from the 50. Sends it down to the 10. Angles it down to the... They're going to mark him down or what? Or in the end zone. Touchback. Wildcats pick up a break on the kick. All right, Arizona will get their hands on the football. We'll be back to soggy Arizona Stadium right after this. and 10 at their 20-yard line. After the punt, Danny White gives to Gary Taylor. He's hammered down near the line of scrimmage. Picked up one yard, you know, they say. Bo Le Breton. He's a returning veteran. They do have some experience at linebacker, but otherwise, in the three down lineman positions or four, uh, they're inexperienced new junior college transfers uh, trying to acclimatize uh, themselves to this level of football. But there again, we saw the Aggies line up in the Arizona scheme with that flex outside linebacker in the slot. Now they're back to their 4 6, the 43 defense. Four down linemen and three linebackers pressing a little bit. From the shotgun, White, lots of time and going deep. And well overthrows is an antenna receiver, Colin Fouché. Fouché may be the quickest uh, receiver for Arizona. He runs about a 4 4. Nice size, 6'3, about 190 pounds. He came out of the Marines. He's been in the Arizona program a couple years. Orange County Community College is where he came from. And uh, he's showing up well in spring practice and also in the fall. White and the Wildcats will operate from the shotgun on third down and nine with two backs. Intended for Dice. He might have looked to dump. Of course, this is second guessing. Jason Patterson gesturing. He came out of the backfield and was wide open through the middle. Now, Arizona has not thrown to the tight end so far. They've not thrown to the backs out of the backfield. And I suppose in Mexico State and watching tapes, Saw what Arizona did last week, and Arizona's come back and thrown to their wide receivers you know, 20 or 30 yards down the field. Now, Matt Payton will come on for the Wildcats. We didn't expect to see him very soon tonight, the way Arizona handled the ball their first two times. Well, he had a tough week last week. He averaged 30 yards a kick, a net of 27. So both these teams would like to improve their kicking game. His longest was 39. Hits it this time. Taken and dropped and left. Who's got it? At the 36-yard line was Parrish Foster. And the Wildcats' hopes of recovering have been dashed. Foster's a defensive back. He plays the left corner. And uh, we'll see about him and uh, talk more. We have a quarter completed so far at the home opener. The Wildcats lead it 14-0. Returned to Arizona Stadium. The rains have uh, stopped for the moment. A little bit of breeze now blowing to the north. That will perhaps uh, dry the playing surface a little bit. They had a day here today in Tucson, and uh, now they are recognizing on the field the uh, young men and women who are responsible for carrying on that hallowed tradition. They went up and whitewashed the Big A on A Mountain, and of course now it's all been washed off. 
Congratulations to all of them and uh, to the Aggies. They've got the football after their defense held the Wildcats. First and 10 at the 36-yard line. Sweet dropped and picked up again. And banging around down there is Lawrence Truehill. Jimmy Sprott came up again and made a stop. Truehill was the top rushing back for the Aggies a couple of years ago, their 6-5 and five season. He had to sit out all of last year because of academic difficulties. Take a look at the first quarter. Passing yards, the Wildcats with 59. Rushing yards, Arizona with 76. On second down, give right through the right side of True Hill again, this time out to the 38-yard line. Where it'll be down, third down and eight for New Mexico State. Thomas Demps made the stop. Got some assistance from Brandon Sanders. Solid. Single back. Pizzula behind Ledbetter. Trips to the far side. Mix up on the snap. And down he goes. On top of him very quickly was Joe Salvea. There's another young player for Arizona that's going to be a very good one. Never was the snap completed. And down he goes. And in punt formation again is Chad Zesha. He hits that one at the 22, waiting for it is Dice. Let's it hop one time. He's going to let it hop, hop, hop into the out of bounds reaches of Arizona Stadium. At the 23 yard line, that's where the Wildcats will take over. Both kickers kicking a little bit better. Secha is from Paradise Valley. In fact, New Mexico State has nine players from Arizona. They got more from Arizona than they got from New Mexico on that play. Including their kicker, Colin Bubba, out of Rincon High School. All right, Danny White and the company on first down. Out of the eye formation. Right side. Good blocking. Picks up about seven yards. Antoine, big strong kid, wearing him down. Samuel Manuel with the stop. Another look. Well, here's a pitch that'll go right to this area in here. Just a direct handoff. Now we watch and see if we get some pulling from Arizona. They like to pull the outside guard. We see 55 over here. Ulu Pumeli is just straight ahead blocking. Just a power dive right off inside tackle. All right. And while we played with your new toy, Antoine got a couple more yards on the left side. And that'll bring up a third down and short. So Bruce Larson with the Telestrator, folks. Well, Antoine Carter. 151 yards last week against Georgia Tech. Now, on a rear high effort. He comes close to 100 yards in each ball game. He doesn't even have to do that to uh, take over the number one spot as a career rusher, rushing leader for Arizona. He would uh, take over for Art Lafino, who had a lot of publicity here in the last couple of weeks, was a great running back under Warren Woodson, who later coached at New Mexico State. Had their brightest era ever in football at Aggie Land. Well, obviously, Antoine had enough for the first down, so the Wildcats will have it that way. First and 10 at the 33 yard line now. Double tight end and I formation. The formation we're probably going to see a lot from Arizona. Antoine cuts back, and he's got some space. Off to the races at the 30. Cuts again. Down he goes. The strong safety, James McIntyre, was going to corner flag him. And he said, no, you're not. I'll just knock you down. 
making his own way here off the left side. Now watch the cutback. Similar kind of play, just that pitch off tackle. He can go inside or out, and he cuts it back against the green, almost duplicating his run against uh, as a, against Oregon State last year where he went for the <laughs> touchdown, 78 yards. Oh, Antoine, playing, playing running back like a good linebacker, stuck his helmet in the McIntyre. If you're going to tackle me, I'm going to make you feel it. So he's got to be awful close to his 100 yards right now. Here we are right just into the middle. In fact, uh, David Hurst says he's got 103 right now. And uh, you're right. We're early in the second quarter. That's his fourth consecutive 100-yard game. Play action. White double pumps and tries to get it to Carter. That's Kerry. Excuse me, Kerry Taylor. Not Gary, but Kerry Taylor. And the play is busted. Kerry caught Donald 13 Be passes last year and eight the year before. That's his first opportunity this year. Donald Beasley, number nine, he was beaten on the play that allowed Dice to score. And then on the ensuing kickoff, he was nailed and was out of the ballgame for a little bit, but he's back. Speaking of out of the ballgame, Warner Smith has been concussed. He will not be back tonight. So Warner out with a concussion. Patterson trying to sweep. Tony Gray, the middle linebacker, came up around. Oh, Schmidtke, rather. Kevin gets his uh, first opportunity. Ran so well against the Georgia Tech. More straight-ahead stuff against Georgia Tech, especially in that last drive. Shifty little runner, true freshman. The Arizona plan, maybe two or three true freshmen this year. Two last year. Then you go back to 92, when they played 10 or 11, so you can see the progress of the program. Very tough for a true freshman to crack this uh, Arizona lineup now too deep with the experience they've developed and the strength of the program. All right, this time it's Patterson and Carter in the backfield with White operating out of the shotgun. Flags fly. There was time on the clock. Let's see. I think there were still two seconds left. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. Feet third down. Well, the clock wasn't the problem. Well, it might have been the, the two halfbacks. Arizona's running two uh, different sets now from their shotgun. They're running it with one back back there. In the cases you indicated, Patterson and, uh, and Schmidt back there on this particular occasion. And uh, one of those backs may not have been uh, set. We'll watch this time closely. They need to be set. And they are. Once again, it is Patterson and Carter. White can only dive on it. That'll bring up a third, well, it'll bring a fourth down, and for McLaughlin to be a 50-yarder off of uh, some tenuous turf, but they're going to try it. Here comes Ryan Hessen, the holder. And Steve McLaughlin will try a 50-yarder. Well, let's see where Ryan goes down. And Manny Ott is in there filling in for uh, Warner. He's a little concerned because uh, Warner's on this uh, field goal kicking team. And, need to find out who's number two at that spot because Warner Smith with a concussion is being held out right now. Steve McLaughlin had to change his kicking style slightly this week. He had a kick blocked at the Georgia Tech. This time the attempt is up and it is good. Steve McLaughlin dials from long distance and Arizona adds three more. Tough on a slick field to do that, but McLaughlin, a sure-footed kicker, able to nail it. So McLaughlin's going to take a break and change his shoes, and uh, we'll take a break, too. We'll be back. Arizona Stadium, the Cats out front, 17-0. scrimmage, which really means he has to get that kick up a little quicker. You know, they took that kicking tee away from that kicker a couple of years ago. 
We were out of practice the other day, though. It's remarkable how much lift the kickers in college are able to uh, achieve early uh, in the in the kick uh, without the tee. Remarkable, remarkable stuff. We've got a chance to observe that one rule change for the coming year, and we see one, two, three, four, five Aggie uh, football players on that restraining line. This year, they changed the rule. You don't have to have five up there. You used to have a rule you had to have five, but most teams are still keeping five up there to protect on the onside kick, so the rule hasn't really affected any play that I've watched uh, so far this year. Not many rule changes. Most of them you have to do with fighting. McLaughlin nailed a field goal a moment ago, nails the kickoff into the end zone. They're going to bring it out. At the eight, being taunted, knocked, and finally down at the 14-yard line. That kick was taken by Kirk Compton. Well, he's a newcomer to this team. He played last week and had seven carries. He wasn't even on the roster. He was a walk-on, and... Uh, Put him on the receiving team. He may not play again but for running that kickback. He was about seven or eight yards deep in the end zone. Well, Parrish Foster and Brian, uh, well, actually Donald Beasley and Parrish Foster have both, both been shaken up tonight. Those are the other two kick returners, so we may be seeing him again. Okay, the Aggies first and 10 at their 14. They're going to give it to the right side. And nowhere to go. Lots of blue shirts. Lots of blue shirts. Uh, great quickness and great pursuit. And there you see Salavea, number 56. He's about 6'2". Samoan. They just think he's going to be a great, great player for Arizona. Uh, he went to Oceanside High School, just came from Samoa maybe two years ago. Pulu Pumeli and a number of Samoans in that community. Junior Seo went to USC. There's been some great Samoan football players on the uh, national scene at the... Uh, Draw play. Draw play goes nowhere. That time to give was to Pizzula. Ryan caught in the backfield. We'll see where they mark that one down. A one-yard loss. That brings up third and 13. Let's see what Jim Hess and his offensive coordinator, Howard Wells, want to do in this situation. Their pair, they go back to pass. Arizona might bring everybody. Eight minutes. Arizona's quickness. We see Charlie Kent, number 45, now has kind of won his uh, inside line spagger spot back. He did not play last year. He redshirted with an injury. Ledbetter with lots of time fires it up, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Davis, and the ball was low, so we'll see the New Mexico State punting unit on the field. Charlie Kent provided the coverage. Zetcha back into the ball game. This will be his fourth punt of the night. Richard Dice inside the 50-yard line at the other end of this. See if Arizona wants to block it. And they're... Well, he's kicking a lot better today than he kicked last week against Florida. Wow, look at this. That will help the average a bit. Down at the 25-yard line. What a punt. Great, great punt. All right, the Wildcats will get the ball back, and they'll be underway from the 25-yard line at Arizona Stadium when we come back right after this. Well, whatever Chad Zetcha's punting failures were last week, he's made up for that one. That was a 65-yard punt. That, that's his career high. He had a 64-yarder last year. Last week, his long was 37. Arizona on first down. They give it to Antoine Carter, who toughs it out around the 30-yard line. The middle linebacker, Tony Gray, made the stop. Had a lot of tackles down in Gainesville last week. 12 tackles. We made the point earlier that their free safety, Walton, and their strong safety, McIntyre, had 24 tackles between them. And when your free safety and your strong safety are making uh, tackles with that uh, frequency, you know you're in trouble. Second down for the Wildcats. Carter. 
around the left side with a move snared down after he picked up the first down. Bolin Breton, the senior weak linebacker, made the stop, number 41. He's been busy tonight. I don't know how many carries uh, Antoine Carter has had so far in his ball game. A lot of them. I think they're making up for uh, his lack of opportunities early in the season. As we indicated, he missed most of fall practice. Hurt himself down at Camp Cochise, and they kind of held him out to hopefully make sure he was healed by the time the season started. And that might have been a factor in his fumbles last week at Georgia Tech. Well, he looked strong tonight. I can tell you without reservation, he has had 14 carries so far tonight. Ball up the middle. Tony Graham, Bowl of Brayton with the stop. That'll bring up the second down and a seven after the three yard game. I think as we've watched this first half, Arizona probably really has done what they'd really like to do. They've run the football enough to uh, keep the Aggies honest, establish the run, and then uh, the passing game has really been effective when they decided to throw the football. Perhaps we'll see that now. Out of the shotgun, second down and seven, ball at the 42 yard line. They do run from this position as well. And they are. Give is back inside to Carter. Cuts back, still on his feet, and he's close to the first down. They have gotten it. Very close spot. We'll see about it. It looks early in the year as if Arizona will use the shotgun a little bit more. They're getting to be more and more like maybe UCLA. UCLA is the only other team in the, in the pack that really uses a shotgun a lot. This is really uh, amounts to a draw play. You can picture the quarterback coming back and then handing off to the halfback who sits back there. In this particular occasion, the quarterback is already there. Yeah, we thought it was going to be close. They're going to measure right now. Big Tony with a new red, white, and blue jacket. All right, he's just, that's all you need. That's all you need. Just a little bit of the football across the chain. Arizona has another first down with six minutes and five seconds remaining in the first half. You're right, Coach. They're starting to grind him up, 134, and I believe Mr. Carter has approximately 120 of those 134 yards. Arizona's been averaging defensively, giving up only 30 yards a game. And New Mexico State would have to feel pleased. They've got 27 already, and we're not halfway done. And Georgia Tech did not get that for uh, 60 minutes last week. They had 20. All right, the pitch to Carter. The give to the end around. Here we go. Big wall of blocking over here. That's Poo and Cachet. Cachet gets hauled down by the jersey. <laughs> He's probably Arizona's speediest receiver, and uh, he showed it there, but a great wall of blocking. Watch the pursuit of New Mexico. They're really taking Carter because Carter's been hurting them over there on that side. There's just no white shirts over here to the left. Pulu Pameli really had a chance, maybe if he'd have stayed outside, to go all the way. Coming all the way across the field is Samuel Manuel to make the stop. First down for the Wildcats now at the New Mexico State 20 yard line. Here's Gary Taylor through the middle, straight, hard running. Picks up five yards, it'll bring down, bring up rather, second and five. that the reverse will do is keep New Mexico State a little more honest on those sweeps and power plays that Arizona has been running with Carter. So as you approach the game and attack the defense, uh, you're looking for ways to exploit them. You're trying to set up certain kinds of plays. That's why you run a dive play or you run it off tackle. Or, and once the team gets to stopping those kind of plays, then you try to come back and counter with something else. Taylor, the tailback. He's got the football looking for Sherman outside. Cuts back up, through. Again, running very tough for a kid who didn't get to play down in Georgia. Let's take another look at Gary. Here comes New Mexico State with a blitz, and Arizona's block. He still is able to pick it up. Contained penetration. But Taylor's been able to hit the seam and uh, get a few extra yards. Donald Beasley's been taking a beating, and he keeps on ticking out there. The cornerback for New Mexico State. 
First and goal for the Wildcats. The pitch is to Antoine Curry. He's got a little bit of room. Good blocking out there by Patterson. He's over for the touchdown. touchdown but now he is the number three all-time rusher at Arizona he just passed David Adams Arizona's just been raining fire you see Maniot number 50 pulling then Patterson that's his job lead blocker boy that was makes it a very effective play and Arizona's hurt the Aggies with just power right or left McLaughlin makes it 24 points and Arizona is well ahead. We've got four minutes and nine seconds remaining in the first half. And the Wildcats have 24 points. The Aggies have nine. Watch Patterson right here leading the play and watch Maniot right here, the guard, who's going to pull and lead it through the hole. Patterson, 46, there you see Ott, number 50, making a block. Power sweep to the right. Very effective for Arizona. Ott McLaughlin's kickoff into the end zone, and the Aggies say that's plenty this time. New Mexico State will begin with the ball at the 20-yard line. Well, that's a lot better field position than the eight they got last time when Compton tried to run it out of the end zone about five or six yards deep. Ledbetter trailing by 24 points with four minutes and nine seconds remaining in the half. The Wildcats scoring drive. Took him eight plays, 75 yards. The big play, of course, the end around with Colin Pouchet picking up big yardage. And Antoine Carter finally with the touchdown. All right, first down for New Mexico State. Pitch. A little bit of blocking on the near side. A little bit, just enough to get a couple of yards for running back Lawrence Truehill. Yeah, probably about six. And that might be as good a running play as New Mexico State has hit. Arizona pretty much with their base defense and starters in there right now. Who started the ball game? Uh, Lopez, number 60, playing for Demps and uh, 42 and Sprott, the young Richard uh, freshman, playing that outside linebacker spot or a uh, rush end spot for Bruski right now. Second and five. Bruski was in the backfield and that made it impossible. Montez to go anywhere. Excuse me, that was Bruschi on the outside on the right. And Akeel Jackson now is who Sprott has been playing for. Number 96. Okay, the give will be to Montez. Now watch, there's Teddy Bruschi. He's not supposed to be here. Yeah. Well, he's a rush lineman, sometimes called an outside linebacker position, but he's on the line of scrimmage all the time for Arizona. He plays on what they call the perimeter of the outside. He's so good on the outside shoulder of that... Uh, tight end or that defensive tackle on that side. He's just tough to contain. Now the New Mexico State Aggies have pulled a timeout with 2.58 to go in the first half. We'll take the timeout as well. 24 nothing Wild against.
the Aggies have debated. It's third down and nine. Ledbetter. Up for grabs it goes. Complete. Into triple coverage. And Ledbetter found his favorite target once again. Lucius Davis, number five. Well, he was picked up by Kozar, the linebacker. They caught Arizona at man-to-man -man defense. And then Tony Bowie as a free safety back there to help him out. Here's a guy with great hands. And he's able to hang on to it as we see Kozar come in late to finish him off. Davis says he'll stay in the ball game for now. He's shaking up a little bit. Three receivers to the near sideline for Ledbetter. And back he goes. Bruski can't get to him. Under pressure, he fires out, completes it. And out of bounds goes his receiver. Osborne and Bruski with the pressure, and that was Osborne with the catch. The senior split in for New Mexico State, and they put together a couple of completions. Gain of six yards on the play, so two good pass plays. Completed to Davis, and now Osborne. Well, he really scrambled, and the thing I, you say about Osborne, he came back. He saw his quarterback in trouble, and he came back to help him out. He wasn't running away from the football because he knew his quarterback couldn't throw it very long under that great pressure. Pitch to Montez, coming to the near sideline. He's got some room. He's got a first down. He's knocked out of bounds. Mike Skurlock finally came and shoved him out. Montez is from Thatcher, Arizona. That's about 130 miles over here. That was True Hill that time, Coach. I read the number wrong. Those numbers are hard to see, that red and uh, white, <laughs> with the white trim. So I'm trying to, it's sure really them. hard to pick them out. But they've run to the sideline pretty good against Arizona. Into the whip linebacker. That's Dips. That's Sprott that time on this side. <laughs> the young uh, redshirt freshman getting some playing time. That little telestrator's made you a bit frisky tonight, huh? Boy, opening night. All right. Well, we've got another timeout on the field right now. It was interesting last night. We'll take a look, a look at the field right now. They had a... We had the uh, Hall of Fame night last night. We'll talk about that a little bit. There, man right there, it's Antoine Carter, number two. Well, he is now the number three rushing back all-time Arizona football history. Art Lapino still the number one guy, 3,300 yards. Then Hubie Oliver, number two. And now it's Antoine, 2,575. So Hubie Oliver is still in sight. Here's Antoine on his last carry, good for six. I don't think many people are recalling anything about a fumble in Georgia last week. I, you know, in the game so far with two minutes left in half, Arizona has not turned the ball over. Uh, every offensive drive they've had has resulted uh, in the score. They've had to punt, I believe, once. So they've really been very productive as far as offense is concerned. Defensively, uh, New Mexico State's probably got a little more yardage than teams are used to getting against Arizona. With his red numeral on, Truehill is the only back. Ledbetter out of the pocket, going to dump it, and it's caught, yes or no? Yes, it is. New Mexico State, they moved over 50 yards now in the last six plays. Sean Manuel, he had four catches in the game in Florida last week. He's a six foot three junior. And he's a twin. The Aggies have twins, a receiver and an and a, uh, outside linebacker. Mm -hmm. The Manuel brothers, 6'2", 6'3", 240 pounds, a little bigger than the Arizona twins. On second down. Ledbetter. Out of the pocket again. He's tough to contain. Oh, great, great play. Brandon Sanders. Got his claw out in front of that one. Perfectly throwing pass on the run, and, and Brandon Sanders got there just in time to get a hand on it. Otherwise, it's a touchdown. He got beat at Georgia Tech uh, when he didn't really know where the ball was, kind of face guarding his receiver. But boy, he made up for it on this particular play. Great, great play. It's Marcus Polk, number 28, the wide receiver. And you see that coverage? That's man-to-man -man coverage as Brandon Sanders was pressing up on the line of scrimmage and ended chasing those 30 yards into the end zone. Great throw by Ledbetter. Third down. And again, he got out 
outside the pocket. That one's batted away. No flag. Good defense that time in the corner from Claudius Wright, number five for the Wildcats. And Wright got beat on a touchdown pass last week against Georgia Tech. So the cornerbacks, a strong safety for Arizona, who were taken advantage of uh, last Saturday, have come back and made uh, a couple of important plays here in this ballgame. Ledbetter throws a ball as well as any Pac-10 quarterback we're going to see. Here's the Tucson kid, Colin Bubba, out of Rincon High School. He's kicked 52 and 53-yard field goals in his career at New Mexico State. He was a walk-on from Tucson. And that one is way to the left. However, Brandon Sanders draws the handkerchief. Running into, roughing, what do we have here? Five-yard running into the kicker. Running into the hole, there's a five-yard penalty for the down. One more look. To the holder. <laughs> to the holder. <laughs> I'm not. I've not seen that, Coach. Running into the holder? Boy, this safety thing's gone too far. <laughs> Running into the holder? We need to go to the book. We need to go to the book. Wow, that's Tim Snowden. He is the holder. He's the backup quarterback. <laughs> hey, guess what I got? I got five yards, guys. Now let's see Brandon. I think he rolls in. Now watch this. Roll, roll, roll. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that might be a penalty at the Arthur Murray Dance Studio, but I'm not sure it is an in intercollegiate football. Wow. <laughs> well, that'll bring up a fourth down again. And yeah, it looks like they're not going to kick it this time, Dave. Yeah, they're going to go for it. With a minute 57 left to go. Bubba, as we mentioned, a walk on out of Brentcon High School. He ranks fourth in their school history with 14 field goals. There's Larry McDuff. He kicked one 53 yards in high school, so he's, uh, he's got a good live leg. Right in, single back. Three wide receivers to the far side on fourth down and five. Running a little option this time. Ledbetter keeps. He's knocked down short of the first down. Mike Skurlock came up to make the play. Along with Jimmy Sprott. Well, Mike Skurlock, you know, has played almost every position uh, for Arizona since coming to them from Troy High School. His senior year now. Was an inside linebacker at one time. At six feet and about 198 pounds. A couple years ago. Been a strong safety. And that has been working at cornerback. Lost his job because of injuries. Couldn't fully play. And uh, now it looks like he's back into the stream of things. Has uh, earned a starting job in this ball game, Playing what Arizona calls the boundary corner. And uh, they tried to run at him on that play. And he's successful in containing it. Arizona takes over on downs. Danny White from the shotgun on first down. Quickly he goes to Carter. Gary bounces off one tackle. Charges forward. Still on his feet. And even squirmed for an extra yard. And for a host of Aggies got to him. McIntyre, the strong safety, finally brought him down. And Arizona threw to the backs four times last week. I think that's their first completion. To a back in this. Uh... Yeah, they want a ball game. They want to measure, coach. The play went on or about 10 yards, so we'll check it out. Turns out to be a very pleasant night. It was raining like heck at the start of the ball game, but now the storm has moved elsewhere, and we've got a great night for a home opener. Not a particularly good day for the Pacific 10 Conference out of conference today. Many of you saw the Pennsylvania State University Nittany Lions overrun, and I mean overrun and overpass. Kick and everything. Southern California back in Happy Valley today. 
And uh, to some people, a stunning tie at Evanston, Illinois, as Northwestern drew with Stanford. And UCLA was struggling the last time we saw. That was a tie ball game with SMU. Oregon State wins against Wyoming up in Corvallis. Oregon's playing Hawaii. We're not sure about that one. And Arizona State is down 26 to 7 against Miami. So the pack is, uh, as you indicated, uh, taking a little beating here. White with the sneak, good for the first down. Interesting to see what the Wildcats want to do with this possession with a minute 14 to go in the half on their own side of the 50 yard line. The ball spotted at the 32 yard line. White going to throw, so the Wildcats aggressive. Plenty of time. Fires for Dice. Dice catches it just shy of the first down. Now going to say what? Chess in that time. He's getting a little more playing time, too. Uh, right South seven that time. It's equally <laughs> hard to see the Whitener rules on the blue tonight, too, Coach. Donald Beasley made the stop. He's number nine. So already in the first half, Arizona has hit their wide receivers uh, twice as much as they did in that first ball game against uh, Georgia Tech. All right, minute five to go now in the half. White. Fires. Gets the completion and the first down. That time was to Lamar Lovett, number seven. We're going to get this down right yet. And he gets his first catch. So uh, this is going to help uh, Arizona passing game. 49-yard line for the Wildcats. And there's the great strength of uh, White's arm. He can throw that thing across the football field and they get it there in a hurry. It's a pass that's uh, fairly easy to intercept. Across the middle. This time it is to Dice. Just shy of the first down. Troy Dickey was very good for Arizona across the middle last year at about 6'2", about the same size as Dice. I think Dice has a little better quickness than, uh, than Dickey had. Uh, so they've liked to run Dice in that crossing pattern across the middle. He's also run the out pattern. So I think before the season's over, uh, Richard Dice has the best chance of the wide receivers to be coming the go-to man for Arizona. I'm glad to see the palm line. The hair has dried. Good. 42 seconds remain there. I'm going to get time tonight. Pretty full house tonight. I would say if not exactly 55,000, they're close to it. They have adjusted the... Uh, they have adjusted the... Uh, of Arizona Stadium. There is more disability uh, seating here, uh, an entire area. And now there's about oh, 2,000 less seats in the house now. So about 55,000 is a capacity crowd. And this yeah, it was 56-1, and now it's 55-9. So they have lost, uh, but they've sold more season tickets this year than they ever have. It's close to 2,800, I mean 28,000. So we should see a, a lot of sellout crowds. I'm sure as Arizona looks forward to uh, day off, the week off next week and then Stanford. Stanford has to play San Jose State next week, a team from the Big West Conference. And a bitter rival at that. Right. And, uh, Coach Ralston, who coached at Stanford years ago and took him to the Rose Bowl, will match up, and they'd like nothing better than to give Stanford some trouble. Looks like Stanford's still going to be able to score well. I'll score people, but they can't contain anybody. We'll I'll see if the Aggies can contain the Wildcats on the drive with 40 seconds to go. Throw it to Taylor out of the backfield, and he just does get enough for the first down. That'll stop the clock until they set the ball. Bola Brayton made the stop for New Mexico State. 36 ticks left on the clock. They're getting into McLaughlin territory now. Well, Two-minute drill for Arizona. This is something they need. You know, the ball game's probably pretty well in their hands, and uh, these are kind of things you need to work on. White going to throw again. Ball is off the fingertips or the palms of Gary Taylor. Well, Brayton, again, involved in the play. He broke it up. 28 seconds. The clock stops on the incompleted pass. 24-0. Arizona out in front of New Mexico State. From 
the shotgun on second and ten. Drive to throw. Gonna throw deep. He's got dice open. They mark him. Touchdown. Boy, a great catch and a great throw. We had to wait for the Lions judge to get over there because Dice was knocked out right on the goal line, but they said he broke the plane. Second Boy. touchdown thrown by White and caught by Dice tonight. You can see him. He just hits the corner on a fade pattern, and he knocks the cone over. And the cone is part of the end zone, so that's why it's six. By the hair of his chinny-chin-chin. McLaughlin trying to make it 31, and it does. Pretty big first half for Richard Dice and the Wildcats. They now lead New Mexico State 31-0. Dice just on an out pattern or corner pattern. He's going down the middle of the field and then just goes to the corner. Free safety's over there a little late. Man-to-man -man coverage. Pass was thrown with some velocity and right at the hands. Here you see the strong arm of White. Gets there in a hurry. Looks like he's a sidewinder a little bit. A lot of people feel he doesn't throw overhand like all good quarterbacks should. But he still has great velocity. And that was right on the money, right on the hands. Didn't have to break stride to catch it. And there's a guy that can run pretty good in Richard Dice. He had one touchdown catch in 12 football games last year. He has two touchdown catches tonight. Yeah, he cut the hair a little while ago, too. It's very short, very sheer. Arizona scoring drive. Eight plays, 79 yards, just a minute 30. Laughlin's kickoff. Taken at the two. To the 10 and just out to the 20. Fred Branch, number 20, makes it there to the 20. And that's where New Mexico State will have it with 15 seconds remaining on the clock. Mr. Bobo with a stop on that. Special teams player. We'll go back to Dice a little bit at 6'2". You know, he's a little bigger than most wide receivers, and that makes him a nice big target. He can run as well as those smaller 5'9 and 5'10 wide receivers. So you can see the advantage that Arizona has thrown to a guy like that. He has four catches for 122 yards and two touchdowns. Well, this little running jump should put an end to the first half unless New Mexico State elects to stop the clock, which is highly unlikely. So we have played one half of football at Arizona Stadium in 1994. And the Wildcats have a lot to show. They've got 31 points. New Mexico State has done. And we'll have our halftime activities for you coming up right after this. To the uh, second half kickoff, let's take a look at the Pacific 10 Conference scores. Penn State, Happy Valley was unhappy for the Trojans today, 38-14 the final. UCLA just hung on to beat SMU. Lowly SMU, 17-10 the final at the Rose Bowl. How about that? Stanford, Arizona's next opponent, tied at Evanston, 41 up. Washington handled Ohio State today. Oregon State well over Wyoming. Washington State over Fresno State. And in top 25, Nebraska over Texas Tech. You saw that Thursday night, 42-16. Florida, again, over 70 points, 73-7. They're pretty good, Coach. 26-24, Michigan over Notre Dame with last second field goal. Did it to the Irish today. Florida State, 52-20 over Maryland. You saw the Penn State-USC score a moment ago. And the Badgers picking up where they left off over Eastern Michigan, 56-0. Ouch. Alabama over Vanderbilt, Auburn over Northeast Louisiana, and Texas A&M. All winning today. The Wildcats will kick off to start the second half. McLaughlin nails it. Down it comes, and they're going to bring it out. 
This has not been one of the big plays for the Aggies all night. They have not achieved the 20-yard line, and that streak stays intact. Donald Beasley, the cornerback, brought it out. Williams with the stop for the Wildcats. Well, the Aggies have a chance to uh, increase their kickoff return average. Of course, Arizona has a chance to increase their defensive uh, coverage of kickoff returns, and they were very, very good last year. They were number one in the pack, allowing teams only a 14-yard average return. So again, special teams for Arizona have been a strength through the years and uh, looks like they'll continue to do so. Ledbetter gives off the left side. Ball carrier. Was True Hill. Ledbetter was 4 of 11 in the first half. He picked up 56 yards. For his part, I was going to say, Coach uh, True Hill. Gained 22 yards on five carries in the first half. Here's Ledbetter. Well, they had 45 rushing yards. That's about what Arizona gave up against uh, Georgia Tech last week, and that's a little over the average they gave up last year of 30 yards a game. Ledbetter, a quick toss. He was nailed as he delivered the ball, but he completes the pass. David Osborne across the way was the receiver, and they will give him forward progress through the first down marker. So first and 10 for the Aggies. Ledbetter was just dumped as he threw the ball that time. When New Mexico State plays UTEP next week, a team out of the whack, they're still not in the league conference. And I think uh, going against these two defensive teams that have really hurried them and rushed them the last couple of weeks, Florida and Arizona, two of the top teams in the country. I'm sure they'll feel like they've had their ankle weights taken off after a trip They don't have a lot of injuries. Uh, they should benefit. Arizona now going with a lot of number two players. On de Excuse me, defense. Sprout. Boom! That number 45 belongs to Charlie Camp. True Hill was the ball carrier. And Camp said, how do you do? Arizona has Camp in there. Now, Camp was a starter two years ago. Did not play last year. Has great quickness. So he and Kozar. Taking a look at Charlie. Watch and him Sean up. Harris are alternating to that uh, inside linebacker spot. You see Charlie Camp sliding down the line of scrimmage. A true freshman in there now, Malvo, playing as a. Uh, well, ball's thrown. Nice play by Claudius Wright. Came up and broke up the pass. Actually, pretty well thrown once again by Ledbetter. Boy, it was right over the top. Now he will now play in that uh, boundary corner, it looks like, number 21. He's a true freshman. Getting some playing time for Arizona. I think he's going to be a good one. He's about a 4-5, his speed, which is what you like to have in your cornerbacks. He's out of Long Beach Poly High School. Third and nine for New Mexico State, all on their 32-yard line. He's playing right now, strong safety for Brandon Sanders. He's in trouble. However, he's quick enough to turn the corner. He's got Camp in front of him, and he slides into second base. Well, the baseball strike continues, but Ledbetter reminds us of pennant years, of pennant races of years gone by. Charlie Camp has great quickness. If you remember when Charlie Camp was a freshman in the ball game here against California, he had 16 tackles. And uh, we've noticed Ledbetter being able to get around the outside or the perimeter often when Arizona players have hit him in the pocket and a chance for a big loss. Chad Zeksha in to punt a game. It's up and end over and punt to Richard Dice. Takes it. In the middle, knocked down at the 40-yard line. And they're going to mark it at the 40. So a little return of about 12 yards for Richard Dice. And that's where the Wildcats will handle it when we come back. 12.52 left in the third. 31-0 Arizona. football for the first time in the second half. They scored with it to close out the first half. White calling signals. Little lob outside to Dice. He catches that one and he's brought down. Beasley was the victim once again as Dice 
Well, there you see the size of Dice standing next to Beasley. Beasley's about 5'9", maybe 5'10", Dice at 6'2". The pass was laid out there in the nice big hands and the mismatch. Basketball even, mismatch. Right, even though you're right on the guy, you're covering him. Uh, if the ball's high enough, he's going to come out on top. So again, Arizona opens first play with a pass. White, 8 for 13 in the first half, starts out here. And again, Arizona's wide receivers catching only two passes in the last ball game have caught all passes except one here tonight of the nine throwing. Right with the first down, he's gonna work out of the eye formation, drops straight back to throw on another first down, dumps it to Antoine Carter out of the backfield. He's hit hard by the weak linebacker, Bo LeBrink, who's having a pretty good night tonight. You know that last completion to Dice? Might have been the softest pass I've ever seen Danny White throw. He has a reputation of what, you know, baseball terms, he throws a hard ball. It's just heavy, hits in your hands and, and knocks you over, and he throws it with great velocity. But I think, as you indicated, nice, soft touch. And uh, there are a lot of good touch passers around the pack. You talk about Senstrom. Well, yeah, Mr. White, number 16, is caught up with number 17, Richard Dice tonight. Five of 151 yards, 151 to Dice alone. Here's the sweep. Here's Antoine Carter looking for a little space, and he'll be driven out of bounds. Still, he picked up about four yards before he left the playing field. Manuel and LeBreton knocked him out. LeBreton. How's it? And we talked about Patterson off and uh, running out of the eye, and here he is leading the pack, and there you see Manny Ott, number 50, filling in for Warner Smith. Warner uh, received a concussion in the first half. Smith has played the remainder of the first half, the whole second quarter, and now as Arizona starts here in the third quarter, uh, Manny Ott again replaces him. Jason Patterson doing an outstanding job blocking tonight. White's going to fire across the middle and incomplete. The intended receiver was, I believe, Damon Terrell. Exactly who it was. Junior college transfer, El Camino out of Torrance. And another good sized uh, receiver for Arizona, about 6'3, Dice 6'2. And you got Pushaw at about 6'3. So uh, Arizona's kind of gotten away from the quick, small receivers. Uh, Lamar Lovett would still fit in that category. Uh, Kerry Taylor, uh, who has not played much in this ballgame, we thought he would play more than he has, is about 5'11. But uh, so Arizona. Uh, they different make it. Bigger, bigger wide receivers. All right, here's McLaughlin. He's going to try to knock this one from about 44 yards. He's already hit from 50. And he hits from 44. 94 yards of field goals tonight. Pretty good night. Well, Dick Tomey applauds. McLaughlin gets the other tee. We'll change the shoes and we'll uh, change the tapes. We're going to go take a timeout right now. 34 nothing in favor of the Wildcats. Don't go wandering away. We've got left left. the ball down towards the end zone and clears the end zone. He's hitting it well tonight, isn't he? Well, he is. As you look at the flags, it uh, looks like there's no wind up above the stadium, but maybe down in the stadium there might be a little because the wind looked like it caught that. You see the, the banners on the goalpost looks like they're blowing north a little bit. Yeah, just a little trace of a breeze. At the start of the game tonight, we had a classic monsoon. Arizona now with Kosar and Camp in there. 
Sean Harris out. Malvo still plays a strong safety. And on first down, True Hill tries to break through left tackle, doesn't go anywhere. We have another scoring drive to report, Coach. Five plays, 33 yards. Took them all of 25 seconds to come up with a field goal by McLaughlin. What the coaches are going to look at is how many possessions did we have? And they almost scored. I don't know what the percentage is, but they've almost scored on every possession. Some kind of a drive. They've either got a field goal or they've got a touchdown. They've had to kick once in the football game. So their possession opportunities, they've made the most. And they have yielded, or shall we say harvested tonight, 34 points from those possessions so far. Single running back in the backfield for New Mexico State. On second down, led better to throw back across the middle, and that one. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That truck was Brandon Sanders. Now, what's happened? Brandon Sanders has gone to the free safety, and Kelly Malgu. The true freshman has come in and taken the strong safety position that Brandon Sanders. So the Arizona defense has kind of flip-flopped. Let's take another look, if we can, if we dare, at the conclusion of the previous play. Ledbetter gets pounded. Gaboom. That's Osborne. Chuck Osborne doing a great job of the rush. Number eight, here's Brandon. Kashoom. <laughs> He's the free safety, and so he just has to kind of play back there and Look and see what's happening in front of him. Ledbetter miraculously gets the ball away. Teddy Bruschi, and along with him, Chuck Osborne, were all over Cody Ledbetter, who's done an outstanding job tonight. He's been sacked just one time. I think Teddy Bruschi likes playing football. Well, they got rid of the football, all right. And I think the other pleasing thing in the Arizona defense, they were concerned about Chuck Osborne. Could he fill the spot left by Rod Waldrop? They weren't worried about Bruschi. But Osborne had seven tackles against Georgia Tech, and he's come along. He can't probably do as many things as Ron Waldrop. He's not as quick. He has to be spaced in the proper position, but he's bigger and stronger, and so he's done a great job in the first two ball games. So Arizona defensive coach has got to be pleased with his play. Well, the Wildcats get field position, good field position again after the exchange. Nice with a fair catch on the 40-yard line, and that's where Arizona will put it in play with 11 minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Nice with a couple of touchdowns already tonight. Get Tommy back into a more uh, September customary short sleeve shirt. And on the Aggie side, they begin chatting again. What will they do offensively against the Desert Swarm? Okay. White remains in the ball game. On first down. The give. Antoine Carter turns the corner. Got one to beat. Takes a cornerback over for a first down. Antoine is no shrinking violet out there. He's, you've seen running backs, they like to squirt out of bounds, not get hit. Antoine looks for tacklers, homes in on him. Now what Arizona has done, they've really run outside or off the tackles. They really haven't run up the middle much. They did quite a bit against Georgia Tech. Now I think as other teams look at this particular tape, they're probably going to spread their defenses a little bit, and maybe against Stanford, we'll see Arizona giving the ball to the fullback up the middle. Out of the eye formation. White play action. Completes his pass across the way. Jeff Chesson with his, not make that, I take that back. That's 87 99. Yeah, you're right. That's Mike Metzler. There's what the running game will do for you. Big run again. Fake the dive, and again, another nice soft pass just over the outstretched arms of the defense. Metzler with the catch. The Wildcats with another first down. This time on the 32-yard line of New Mexico State. Schmidtke. Freshman getting a chance to run in front of the home folks, and he picks up about six yards. That'll bring up second down and four. Arizona's concerned with the eight penalties and the four turnovers against Georgia Tech here in this ball game. Two penalties so far and no turnover. So it's really been an air-free ball game for the Wildcats. And we have an injured Aggie. We don't have a, an idea you know as much as we do about who that is. 
James McIntyre, the strong safety, was rattled on the previous play. So the injury timeout, Jim Hess. Well, he can get back into his own uh, confines next week. They will play the 45-mile rival Texas El Paso. Made some pretty good money, though. I mean, let's to face it, they're very, very uh, upfront about it. They go down to Gainesville play in front of a lot of people, come over here and play in front of a lot of people, and that, quite frankly, is going to fund the program to a great extent. I think you're right. Let's see if we can get a shot at uh, James McIntyre, number seven. Kevin Schmidtke, the freshman. Let's see if we can catch it. There's Kevin, number 34. Boom, boom. Yep, that got him right there. I think that's one of the things that coaches like about Schmidtke. He delivers a blow rather than taking the blow as a tough little runner. That's his second carry tonight against uh, Georgia Tech. Of course, he was the big runner in that last drive that gave Arizona the win. You know, Mr. McIntyre is recovered uh, in very short order. Good-looking sophomore. He had 17 carries for 92 yards uh, in his first ball game, almost 100 yards. All right, White, play action. Dumps it, and it's knocked down and wide open again was Metzler. Nice little play. However, good defense that time. And Mr. Atkinson. Well, Mr. State has played quite a few people in that front line. They're just not sure who can play for them. Let's find out who Mr. Atkinson is. He's not even on our 2D or our 3D. Brings up a third down for the Wildcats. We're batting 33%. Well, you'd like to look at something there. Deficiency, you know, you like to be over 40% in third down conversions. That's probably the only area that uh, Arizona is below average in performance here tonight. White's pass is dropped. That's a little bit behind. Metzler. The young man, Jerry Atkinson, we don't have him down because he's a walk-on. He's a sophomore out of uh, Danville City College. They have a lot of walk-ons, and they've got a lot of junior college transfers. They're just trying to fit into the program. And here's the first penalty of the second half. Holding, offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. So instead of giving Arizona another shot at a first down, they're going to elect to uh, decline the penalty and let Steve McLaughlin attempt a field goal. This one, as he continues to move a little bit closer, this will be about 44-yard attempt. Well, he's hitting on 75% for the year. Uh, you'd like to be over 70%. That's what they use as a, as a performance average. Not that time. Steve, uh, two for three tonight. And with 10 minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter, we'll take a timeout. Arizona out in front, 34 notes. after the failed field goal attempt. Pretty good field position. The ball on the 27-yard line for him. And on first down, give it straight ahead. Nothing doing. I don't. They had a pretty impressive rushing first half, all things considered. And so far here in the second, they have yet to mount any threat on the ground. Arizona playing a few different players. And you're kind of an interesting story. Number 91. transfer from Villanova. He has played some football in Division uh, II program. They kind of like him. He was really getting a lot of turns in practice this week. He's playing uh, in Brewski's spot a little bit. He's got the same kind of a body build. And uh, looking for depth, you know, at those two positions, those inside spots, especially on their defense. Brewski and Hoffman and Jenkins. A little concerned about giving some backup people a chance to develop those spots. 
There should be some wholesale uh, changes here in the second half. Quick throw outside, the ball knocked, well actually dropped with uh, a little bit of help. Ledbetter took another shot on the delivery. Kelly Malvu with the hit. Here we come, here's uh, Ledbetter Cody say hello. Down he goes again. 52,889 people are watching this tonight at Arizona Stadium. Not a bad open. 52,889. Pretty much a number two group for Arizona, especially on the front line. Skirlock, Kozar, still some uh, number ones in there. And did he get it? Did Brandon Sanders? No, he didn't. He did not pick up the interception on the deflection. However, on third down, the Wildcats defense holds, and New Mexico State will punt again. Ledbetter, now 5 of 17. He's got 64 yards tonight. He's actually played better than those statistics would be lie. Well, he's saved him a little bit with his rushing ability, but you know, he's well below 30, 35% throwing the football, and you've got to be close to 50, or you'd like to be at 60. He's completed just one of his last nine passes. Speaking of passes, successful that one is to the punter Zecha. Dice wants a fair catch, and uh, that's fair enough at the 32-yard line. And the Wildcats have pretty good field position. Nine minutes and 14 seconds are made in the third quarter. Arizona all the way tonight. They scored on their first possession. Pass play from Dice, or from White to Dice, rather. And they've not looked back. 34-0. Annie White. Pretty good night tonight, is Dan. We'll see when and if we'll see Ryan Hessen tonight. Well, the Mexico State ran the football a little bit better in the first half, so that helped their passing a little bit, but uh, they haven't been able to run it at all in this uh, third quarter, and uh, with the defensive pressure Arizona's been giving them. And then with a the good pass to the secondary, uh, it's been tough for them to do anything. And well with the stop. Two on the play, second down and eight coming up. Good. Arizona still with pretty much their first unit uh, in the football game, alternating wide receivers. The give is to Taylor. Gary picks up a block, squirts out close to the first down. I think they'll mark him just beyond the 43-yard line that's very close to the first down. Good blocking that time once again by Manny Ott. Number 50. Let's take another look and see. It's kind of fun watching football teams that got uh, such good blockers. Number 50. Look at that blocking there. Manny takes it on the backer. Boom. No way. That's just straight ahead. And, uh, Manny you know, was center until uh, he was hurt. Didn't play much uh, a couple of years ago. And, uh, Hisham, El Mashtub, uh, kind of took the job away from him. Taylor again gets two straight carries, picks up 19 yards in two carries. Let's see, that'd be eight for approximately eight carries tonight for Gary, brother of Gary. He got about 39 yards. We'll take one more look at the run there by Gary Taylor. Just straight ahead stuff. Nothing fancy about that. Good blocking, good running. Another nine yard pickup. Second down and one. See it. Go straight ahead. Still on his feet is it Patterson? Sure is. Jason Patterson, the fullback. Work. Everybody was expecting that he was down. Well, and that's probably only his first carry of the ball game. They've been faking to that fullback and using him for blocking, and here they give it to him quickly. And just straight up the middle, Arizona post the ball game and running to the outside, off the tackles. Jason having a great night. This kid is a... Uh, a bull. Look, they thought he was down there. No, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. No, 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 no. I'm not done yet. <laughs> About 233 pounds. 
He's a 5'11". Got some playing time last year. Made some good blocks last year. Did run the football a little bit, but mostly Billy Johnson was in that spot for Arizona. White to throw. Dumps it out of the backfield. Reception made. Completed. He's to be there. It's Charles Miles, fullback. You see him blocking tonight now. So the Wildcats throwing to fullbacks, tight ends, wide receivers. <laughs> wow. Looks like Stanford or USC or... Uh, Arizona State, uh, you know, last week they did throw to the fullback and to the halfback, Carter. Only threw to the wide receiver twice. Patterson caught two last week and Carter caught four. Inside they go. A little squirt that time by Mr. Schmidtke. Discussion uh, away from the play, the referees, and uh, Dan White comes over to make sure that he wasn't getting a little bit cranky out there. Well, that's Lamar Harris. Yep. Uh, he caught four passes last week, but they have not thrown to the tight end uh, in this ball game. No, Lamar, anyway. Right. That's Lerd. A lot of people, we're seeing a lot of people handling the ball for Arizona today. I, mean, this, I don't think the statistic is kept on such things, but everybody's had a chance to handle it. Too bad the Fumble Ruski's out long. They can have the guards running. Nice. He goes around. Well, the blitz, well executed by uh, New Mexico State. They picked up something. Dice was open. However, White never had a chance. Tony Gray came right through a gap. Good pressure by New Mexico State. Dice, one-on-one -on -one over there, had the inside position. The quarterback, as we see him coming to the screen from the left, he just get, couldn't get enough on it with that pressure. Oh. Throwing off his back foot, and uh, McLaughlin is going to get another chance to boost his scoring total. Fourth and five, the field goal. A couple of them, well, they're not going. They couldn't possibly be going this effort. <laughs> they must be ooing. Maybe not. 39-yard attempt coming up from McLaughlin. Now Ryan Hessen says no time. Perhaps, well... Arizona did not have enough players on the field. Second time in field goal position, so the Wildcats will take a timeout. So will we. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, let's if we can. Yeah, if we can get an Arizona defensive scheme, you know. It's going to be 25, either one of those. They've been running their second unit now, so uh, I'll try to let you know who it is. Credit Ryan Hessen, quite the cerebral young man, uh, for determining the Wildcats uh, were not compliant with the 11 men on the field rule. They're a buck short, so he called timeout. Now McLaughlin will try again. Well, that's his job. He can see everybody in front of him there. As you indicated, he's really probably uh, an ideal number three quarterback. McLaughlin yep. makes it good. That is his third field goal tonight. And the Wildcats press on with three more points. 37-0, Arizona out in front of New Mexico State. Not a bad way to start the home season, huh? I think they can, if they continue to play as well as they have in this game, it should be a good uh, morale builder and uh, get them ready for Stanford coming up two weeks down the road. They get a chance to look at Stanford next week. They get two weeks to prepare. They got to go up to Palo Alto. That's going to be tough, but uh, it'll probably be a, you know, a game that uh, a lot of scoring. Stanford had a chance to win the ball game here last year. Well, Dick Tomey is uh, not ever quite satisfied. Most good coaches are that way. So he'll find uh, things he wants to work on for the next two weeks in preparation for Stanford. Tomorrow, why don't you give
give us a, a listen and a look. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock this week in sports, you can talk about today's game all you want. Live on KTTU TV 18. It's claw time. Brand new look for us. Yes. And the ball floats in the air. McLaughlin gets it. Oh, just about one yard from the end line. Mr. Branch wisely decides to hand it to a referee. First and 10 from the 24, New Mexico State. Yeah, we've had fun with uh, this week in sports. Uh, you can call in live talk show. We've got guests in. It's a lot of fun. The scoring drive, speaking of a lot of fun, he plays 46 yards. It took him three minutes into 54 seconds. McLaughlin connects from 39 yards. First down for the New Mexico State Aggies. All the way quarterback tonight. Cody Ledbetter. Back to pass on first down. Completes it to his main guy, Lucius Davis. Davis with three touchdown catches last week at the Florida State. Not quite that many tonight. Catches. Oh, no. He had uh, three receptions in the first half. That is his fourth of the night. Yeah, Arizona playing with a lot of number two players right now. Chato Jackson in there's inside linebacker, a couple of true freshmen. Bo Ralphs, the transfer from Villanova. Played in Bruski's spot. Sprott, Richard freshman. Play any other outside position. Option. Good pitch. And with good yardage, enough for a first down that time. Well, they are really into the three deep now, coach. Let's go hunting. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of walk-ons. They may have signed some guys at halftime. Well, Sean Parnell is getting some playing time. He's been on the special teams. He's a good cornerback. Kirk Compton playing for right. Skurlock still in there, a starter. 29 is Rich, another true freshman, playing in the free safety position. They think he's going to be a good defensive back, so Arizona fans are getting a chance to look at some future Arizona football players who would be good ones. On first down, option again. The pitch, same place to Compton. Picks up another three or four yards. Nifty running. By New Mexico State in the option formation. Salavea with the uh, stop. Yeah, they got a little speed in the backfield. Better, better control the ball. It'll be, it'll be interesting following New Mexico State and see how well they do. There you see uh, Salavea, the Samoan. Boy, about 270, 6'2 or 3. He's going to be kind of Jimmy Hoffman of the future for Arizona. 270 pounds, 270. All right, clock ticks, 422 remaining in the third quarter. A little roughhousing there along the line. No gain on the play for New Mexico State. Salavea again with the stop. The Aggies have been beat up tonight. They're getting more uh, attention on the sideline. Marcus Polk out with a possible bruised rib. James McIntyre, you saw him come off a little while ago. It's confirmed he has a concussion. And Parrish Foster is out with a sprained ankle. So a little price is growing on this uh, two-game road swing for New Mexico State. An economic phenomenon. Playing in front of a couple of big houses in Gainesville and now in Tucson. Third down and four to go. The ball marked at the 49-yard line. Redbetter dumps it. They set up the screen and they complete the pass to True Hill, but he didn't get far enough. <laughs> Lopez putting on some pressure, too. Let's take another look. There he is, Flexman, right there. He's got his responsibility of charging or dropping and getting into zone defensive cartridge. In this case, you're going to see pressure. He's moved to the outside. He's moved Ralph's in there. He comes in, then retreats. They cover the screen pass. Didn't get it intercepted, but he did a good job of filling fulfilling his responsibility. Punt to Dice. He's in a sea of white jerseys with his great hands and concentration. He makes another fair catch, this time at the 19-yard line. That's where Arizona will resume possession. Two minutes and 59 seconds remain in the third quarter here at Arizona Stadium. The Wildcats out in front, 37-0. Richard Dice with a couple of touchdown receptions tonight. 
Anderson's going to get a chance. Well, they've still got a smile on their face. They're not going to get into back home next week and play Texas El Paso. And what that means for Arizona is that they're still going to try to redshirt uh, Brady Brent. You know, keep him out of there unless White should get hurt. So Hessen's going to get some opportunities here. Gives to Gary Taylor. Picks up maybe, maybe four yards on the spot. Sophomore, 6'2 two and 2'12. Two He's really the number two quarterback. But unless they need him as the season progresses, they would probably go with Hessen in games like this rather than use up for Batten's uh, eligibility. Well, the dream is to use uh, get Brady an extra year of redshirt, right. but of course, in a tough situation, that will not be the whole. But this young man has done so many things well for Arizona. Hessen gives to Taylor, and he picks up some good blocks, and I think just enough for the first down. Sophomore, he plays high school ball in Saguaro. Good basketball player. He does a lot of things. He's an honor roll student. He's almost considered uh, as, a, uh, as an assistant coach out there. I mean, he's usually got the baseball cap on, charting things, and holds on uh, placements. Yes, did a pretty fair job, by the way, last year at UCLA when both White and Batten were right. knocked down. So. Six for 14 to an interception, but he led the Arizona to three scores in the second half. Mr. Taylor picks up four yards on the carry. Bring up second down and six. Now we see both Taylors in the ball game. 62, Willie Walker coming in to get some offensive experience. It's Tony Gray. 230-pound senior. He'll be happy to get out of the Southeast Conference. It's Pistol Pete. He's named after Frank Pete, the real Pistol Pete. Not a bad job. And maybe we've seen the last of uh, Antoine Carter as uh, Gary Taylor is getting a lot of uh, opportunities. Essence pass just falls and completely was under a lot of pressure that time. That's Joey Branch, the third string fullback, now getting some playing time. He's got the same kind of stature as those first two fullbacks, Miles and uh, Patterson, and now Branch. He's about 5'11, 230. Uh, those, if you stood those guys next to each other, they'd, uh, you'd be hard to tell them apart. Kerry Taylor brings the play back into the ballgame. Keep smiling, keep it going. There you go. Hessen on the draw. It goes nowhere. And New Mexico State coming with a blitz. Kevin Schmidtke stopped well short of the first down, so we'll see about Mr. Payton coming in to punt. Time whittling away in the third quarter. Arizona's home opener. 40 seconds remains, and uh, that means that Payton's punt will go with the slight breeze at his back. waiting for the punt. Pink, low kick, bounces Arizona's way. And New Mexico State gets the ball at the 15-yard line. Well, change of possession. 13 seconds remain in the third quarter. New Mexico State will have a chance to uh, get on the scoreboard tonight. As the coach mentioned, the uh, Aggies next week at home. Or I take that back. Their last road game they play at Texas El Paso. That's 40 miles away from Las Cruces. And then uh, Arkansas State, then the conference. You and that, and that conference, others. they just expanded last year. Southwest Louisiana is picked to win it. The Aggies are picked to finish second. But they don't play each other, so it's possible it could end in a tie. That is a very big West conference. It is. It's gotten bigger and bigger. Led better. Overthrows Davis. Sean Parnell, number 15 for Arizona. Back up to Claudius Wright, junior college transfer. Wildcats to repeat. They have a week off next week. Then they travel to Palo Alto. Then a couple of home games, including their Pac-10 opener. That'll be on October 1st. 
against the Oregon State Beavers, who were victorious today, by the way, over Wyoming. And then Colorado State, who too were victorious today. They'll be in on the 8th of October. Yeah, that's a whack team, and they're not bad. They're picked to finish second in the whack behind the BYU. Led better. Out to the 15, looking for the 20. Slides into touch, as they say. He's at the, marked out at the 20 yard line. Chuck Osborne and Charlie Camp were causing the consternation in the backfield of the New Mexico State Aggies, who will now repair to the south end of Arizona Stadium because, ladies and gentlemen, we have completed our third quarter of play. And as we look at the scoreboard, we find the Wildcats leading New Mexico State 37 points to none. scoring defense. Two years ago, they were number one in the nation with nine points. So, again, you're seeing the same kind of defense that Arizona has been playing the last couple of years. I don't see you're going to see much drop. And a game like this is going to give them a chance to really find out who their second line players are to build some depth and to just strengthen that defense. Osborne back in the game, so they do have some of their front line players. Sprott getting a lot of playing time. Rodriguez, who they think is a good nose guard. He's a little guy out of Nogales, but they like him. This gives uh, Osborne a chance to play uh, off the tackle a little bit, so he's not always on the nose tackle. They think he's kind of better right in the position he's playing right now. Big loop by Osborne. Uh, yep. Well short of the target. The target was once again Davis, and it'll go as an incomplete pass on third down. Chuck Rich, the defensive back in the neighborhood there, and the Wildcats will get the ball back. Chad Seta again to punt. He's had a well-worn leg through the first two football games of the season for the Aggies. In his career, he's never had a punt block. Well, that Arizona has a reputation. It's a great kick. Dice backs up, takes the fair catch at the 31-yard line. You're darn right that was a good kick. So that's much, you know, last week he was 27 yards a kick. And today he's up around 45. Steve with three field goals tonight, a couple of successful extra, ex successful extra points. Such as average last year was 39.5, which ranked him seventh in the Big West. After three rushing plays, the Wildcats 40. Lots of yards for the Wildcats. Arizona had 41 plays in the first half. You know, as a, as a coach, you'd like to hopefully get your team to run off 75 plays during a football game. Arizona ran off 83 last week against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech only had 50 tough to win when you have uh, your opposition runs 33 more plays than you do. You're on defense 33 more times, and that's the kind of football team Arizona's going to be. I think as they play the competition in the pack, teams are not going to have the football very long against Arizona. You're really going to have to be productive. You got to, the kind of team that's going to have a chance to beat Arizona is a big play team. You've got to throw a long pass. you got like Stokes, Setschkamp, some of those kind of people. I don't think you can run the football 80 yards against Arizona two or three times a game and score. Gary Taylor picked up eight yards on first down. On second down, we'll see if he got the required three. Well, maybe a little bit shy. They're gonna mark a third down in about a foot or so. They're satisfied with the mark. Third down and one. Clock runs, 13 minutes and 39 seconds remain in the football game. did not to play a lot in the first half. Now he's getting some playing time. He's been a little injury prone here early in the season, uh, like his brother. Ryan Hessen going to keep, jump over the right side of the line. He'll pick up the first down. Danny White's had a good night. We saw him a moment ago on the sideline. He's a nice 
down the arm right now and relax and get ready for a week off from the competition. They'll be working plenty. Well, the Arizona offense has really looked uh, two-dimensional here tonight. So. The last couple of years, they've been about 70% uh, run and 30% pass, and tonight they're pretty close to 50-50. Really great balance. Robert Coulter, the ball carrier for the Wildcats. He picks up four yards. That'll bring down, uh, oh, they pick up that many? No, two yards, second and eight. You see Robert? <laughs> Manny Hot stays in the ball game. He's the only star. Well, he didn't start. You know, he was a backup uh, right guard for Warner Smith. We're not sure how bad Warner Smith is hurt with that concussion. But Manny Hot continues to get playing time, so he's... Uh, He'll be in shape for next week. Everybody else on the line is new. In fact, he's centering right now. He's the backup center for Hisham. Hessen, well, they're going to try to bring him down for a loss, but he stepped back up and mitigated that circumstance. A loss of about two instead of more. Mark Mitchell came in to make the stop for the uh, sack. The other, the other player we haven't seen is uh, Mu Tagawahi, a big uh, Hawaiian who's uh, been around the Arizona program for four years. He's a little heavy. He's closer to 350 than he is to 300. I think that's one of the big reasons he's not playing much, but he worked on the scout team all last week. A little heavy? We weren't sure he was going to play or not, but he could give us more depth at that uh, offensive line. Hessen's going to go a little bit deeper, and it's complete. Yes, sir. Lamar Lovett gets the package from Ryan Hessen. Good for them. Lamar has played on defense, offense, receiver. He's good to quarterback, to strong safety. And here Hessen hits him deep. Coverage again. On him man for man, just up in the air and out jumps. Great young man, recently got married. His brother, Lamont, played fullback for Arizona last year. He's still here on campus working in the media arts uh, area. Here's the toss to Schmidtke. Turned it back up. Boy, he just powered his way for an extra three or four yards. That was a good throw by Hessen. And uh, as I looked at the uh, replay, Coach, I looked at him looking off the receiver. He dropped back, looking to the right side, then knew exactly where Lovett was going to be. Looked him. Picked him up quickly and fired. Under a little uh, pressure, too. He got hit pretty good as he released that uh, football. Ten minutes, 30 seconds remain in the game. The Wildcats well inside. Aggie territory. They haven't scored a touchdown for a while now. Hessen gives. This is Schmidtke again. Enough for the first down. So the freshman tailback, who was such a big part of the story down in Georgia last week. Up the first down now. Wilbur picking up friends as he goes along, working the crowd tonight. So we get that mouth one more time there. Halftime Arizona had run 43 plays and New Mexico had run 29. And I suppose the difference in this half is pretty similar, so that's going to be about 20, 25 to 30 more possessions than New Mexico State had. So their defense has really been on the field a long time. right here. That's Mark Mitchell. Right into the line of uh, tracking. Got by Miles. Well, I'll tell you what, that right there illustrates again how well Jason Patterson played tonight with that blocking from that fullback position. And that's probably why he's playing ahead of Miles is his blocking ability. And he had the experience of last year, so he's got a whole advantage. And he had a big runty, nasty run to the play. Minutes and six seconds remain in the game. Hessen. I give to Taylor. He reverses himself, has some space, some more space. Still on his feet. Great individual effort and some very 
tough running by Gary Taylor making his debut for this season. Well, the play Tonight. was uh, busted, you know, it just uh, no blocking on that side. And uh, Coach Tomey's indicated he thinks Taylor is his best straight ahead runner, and he made that play really all by himself. And the sweep to the right, uh, the New Mexico State penetration had taken the running lanes away, and he just adjusted and uh, really made a great play out of that. Taylor again hesitated as he got near the line of scrimmage and he paid for that. Samuel Manuel with another stop. He's been busy tonight. Now they could have a couple of running backs with over uh, 100 yards apiece tonight. Antoine has retired for the evening with well over 100 yards. And now Taylor is getting in the 80s now, somewhere in there. Still with 7, uh, 55 to go. Last week, Carter with 151, and uh, Schmitke with a 92. Hessel's going to pass. The ball is knocked down. Hey, let's go, boys. Hessel had that big completion a moment ago to Lamar Lovett on the rollout that time. And one of the Aggies just stuck a hand up and got a piece of the ball. That's Wall Tower, and he's played pretty well for them. I think New Mexico State's fine. They, they look like they got pretty good agility and quickness on that uh, defensive line. A lot of those uh, individuals are junior college transfers, so it's going to take them a little time to adapt, but they look like they're pretty athletic. So anytime you get those kind of people, uh, that's going to help your defense once they get the schemes down and get working together a little bit better. Hessen out of the shotgun. Trying to pass, and he... Keeps his feet. He's going to rush himself. I'm surprised they didn't call him down. Uh, Number 14, Ryan. Well, I think he. I think he with his left arm, he saved the knee. Well, what do you do if you're Coach Dick Tome? You've got the crowd on their feet. They want a first down or perhaps a touchdown. It's fourth down. Fourth and goal. And they are going to attempt a touchdown. defense has uh, had a nice easy evening of it. That is not the case for New Mexico State. All right. Out of the eye. The pitch. Taylor. Got to get in. Yes, he does. And that was a good tough run by Taylor again. New Mexico State blitzing. They're they were buying in that they're going through the middle. And uh, Gary Taylor went outside. Well, he's got his touchdown first game this year. 70 yards he's got. Last time Arizona scored 40 or more points was about this time of the year two years ago against Utah State. 49-3 was that final. It was a season opener here, as a matter of fact. From the same conference. Yep. Arizona has 43 points. McLaughlin attempts the 44th. Successfully, he is... Successful he is, I should say, and with seven minutes and one second remaining into the game, Arizona has 44 points. We'll be back. has moved up. <laughs> but he's still working the crowd, so. I don't know. Well, I think it's it's either Dice or White or Carter. I mean, it's probably right. I'd like to talk to Dice because I can bet that the odds of them playing well again are very high. Correct. Alright. Yeah. 
Arizona's Wildcats took 14 plays. They traveled at 68 yards, seven minutes and 44 seconds. He lapsed on the clock, and uh, Gary Taylor capped it with a four-yard run for a touchdown. 44-0 Arizona. Point to get some good balance. You know, the running game sets up the passing game, and they had to have that big third down play to Lamar Lovett makes a great catch. Laughlin's kick is fielded and brought out past the 20-yard line for the first time tonight. The team's average only 14 yards of return against Arizona last year. That's Fred Branch, number 20. Stewart made the stop for the Wildcats. That was number two in the conference, so uh, special team strength for Arizona. Here we see some new players again. Mont Williams, 37. Here's a great athlete. They're trying to find a position for him. He's got some inside linebacker play here with uh, Kozar. Malvo, the true freshman, stays in. There's Williams, 37, uh, trying to find his spot. The give, they string him along down the line, still fighting and fighting and filing, and finally out of bounds. Start the ball game tonight has been used throughout the second half. When he left the playing field proper, he stopped the clock. Six minutes and 48 seconds remain in the game. Many of the 52,000 on hand earlier tonight have vacated satisfied, wouldn't you think so, Coach? Oh, yeah, they'd have to be impressed and, uh, and pleased with what Arizona has done. They've really played the uh, air-free football and uh, played very well, I suppose, they're hopeful in the next six minutes uh, they can get through this with uh, no injuries. Right now they're playing with almost second-line players. Uh, these aren't bad football players either. Yeah, Mr. Compton, welcome to uh, the turf at Arizona Stadium. Got held up a little bit. Amongst those coming in, causing trouble, was Armin Williams. And number 91 is Bo Ralph. He's the transfer from Villanova. And he's really moved up on the, the playing chart. I don't know if we can possibly uh, find out before we go off the air, but I'd be very interested to find out how many Arizona players took part in tonight's game and how many touched the football. I mean, it, this... <laughs> I can't recall a game quite like this. Probably every receiver that played. I don't think Kerry Taylor has caught a pass tonight. But other than that, I think everybody's caught one. Ledbetter overshoots his uh, intended that time. And that intended that time was Jeff Cott. And the Wildcats defense has held. The shutout remains intact. The Aggies will kick the football away once again. Well, how does this how does the discussion, the insane discussion about who beat who by how many points? Flores gave up. Well, we got a flag, uh, flags everywhere, so <laughs> it wasn't the clock. But this gives me time to talk chat with you about this. New Mexico State scored 21 points on Florida. Now, if Arizona maintains the shutout. The word. <laughs> well, well, first, I'll, I'll do. I'll bring this up again after we take a time. <laughs> we'll come back to Arizona State for this important topic right after this. the space shuttle fly by over the earth. Now I was going to wonder, you wonder about the insanity of the, uh, the polls, and uh, certainly uh, this year in particular with the Wildcats on the cover of Sports Illustrated, etc. the polls have become a very big part of our lives in Southern Arizona. So anyway, Florida wins 
but they gave up 21 points. Let's assume for a moment the final score is 44 zip. Who had the better time against this game? Uh, that, when you take that 21 and put it on Arizona, it's 44, so that's 65, so that makes it pretty even. I think what Florida's going to do is impress the pollsters this week. After they come back and do the same thing to Kentucky, they might move up to number one. Yep. All right, Richard Dice says um, fair catch. Referees say fine. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with the Wildcats on offense right after this. So brings up second down and 10. Jeff Chasson was his intended receiver. Cats don't play at home again for three weeks. Week off, a week at Stanford, and then back here to open up the conference on October 1st against Oregon State. Hessen working with the I formation, tosses to Robert Coulter. Coulter gets a hole on the left side, drives out for about a six-yard gain. Tailbacks, uh, he's probably number four right now, but uh, if they hit two, he could fill in well. That's why he's been around the program for three years. He's on special teams. Once again, the eye formation. Third down and four. Pitch. And another pickup by the Wildcats. Tailback in the ballgame for the Wildcats is Kurt King. And he's a young man at Hershey High School. He's related to the Harris brothers on this uh, football team. They played defense last year for the uh, moved to offense. I'm sure Coach Lundford's uh, happy to get him some playing time as he looks down the road. Fair catch is called at the 19-yard line. That's where the Aggies get it again. Fred Branch. On that exchange, we are going to take a timeout here at Arizona Stadium. Just four minutes and 19 seconds remain in this contest. The Wildcats still pitching a shutout. They've got two 86s in the ballgame. Cott was in earlier wearing 86. Well, it's kind of like Arizona. You know, everybody's got a chance to play. Both teams trying to find uh, who should be playing the majority of the time down the road. And New Mexico State probably more so than Arizona. Led better. After the completion, on first down again. Fires that one out. Incomplete. I think the Aggies have used a, a number of uh, people tonight, too, a, a significant number of people. Yeah, so there might have been, between the two teams, over 120 players tonight. It's very possible. I think the kind of game it was, you know, one-sided for Arizona. Both teams uh, have had a chance to play a lot of people. Last week against Florida was a similar kind of a game. The Aggies had some running backs in there who may not play much the rest of the year, but it gives coaches a chance to find out a little bit more. And the Aggies, especially with so many junior college transfers, trying to fit people into slots to get them ready for the Big West Conference play. Well, I'd like to 
like to see New Mexico State have a big year down there. I'll tell you, I can recall going down there many times. There's a bomb that is completed. Yes or no? Yes, sir. They're going to mark him out at the nine-yard line. What a catch by that man, Mr. Davis. Kelly Malvo, the uh, true freshman for Arizona. Out of Long Beach Poly. Lucius Davis, whoa, great concentration. He was well defended. Eh, and I'm not sure about that. I think he might have uh, tipped it into. Looked like he juggled a little bounce. bit uh, from where we were. Did he have possession as he went out of bounds? Well, they said so. So that's uh, that's the final word on it. First and goal at the nine yard line. So the Aggies could break the shutout unless the Wildcat defense stiffens significantly. On first and goal, the pitch. Compton knocked out at the five-yard line. Compton, one of the many junior college players uh, playing for uh, the New Mexico State Aggies. It's 5'8", 172, about a Citrus Junior College. Another junior college player. Had seven carries last week. They've run to that boundary side pretty good on that sweep, either the option or the sweep. And a fumble, who got it? That better got his own fumble. How about that? So they lose a play. Here we see for Arizona, Jimmy Sprott, number 42, 6'2", 250. Red shirt freshman. He's got a younger brother that's uh, great prospect out of high school. A lot of colleges are looking at him. Clock runs, three minutes, 20 seconds. Left in the ball game. Left better. And a throw for the end zone. Incomplete in the corner. So now what do you do? Do you want to get the uh, field goal unit on? Or do you go for the touchdown? What do you do, Coach? Well, I'm not sure. They haven't had a chance to kick. They're going to go ahead and go for it. Get the points, but they might want to work with their kicking team to give them a shot at it. They're not sending a kicker on, so it looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. Up that shot, Parnell, 15. Well, those, junior. those who have stayed have an interest in seeing the shutout preserved. They're on their feet. Here's fourth down and goal. Well, the junior Wildcats have got a pretty good defense, too, don't you think? Two good plays by Parnell, number 15, junior college transfer out of El Camino. He's on the special teams. Now he's got some good skills skills that a cornerback has to have, so uh, Arizona really probably has uh, pretty good depth at those cornerback positions, probably a little more than they had last year. And this kind of a game gives these young players and new players a chance to get their feet wet. If they have to play down the road, they'll be ready. Now Brandon Sanders led the uh, charge of players out there on the field to congratulate the defense. That's a little bit of what tradition does for you. Arizona has a third quarterback in. It's Sean O'Brien. So, O'Brien, this is the first time he's taken snaps as a Wildcat. Well, the recruiting was a quarterback. Last year, he kind of played the tight end position, and uh, now they got him back at quarterback. Redshirted last year for Mission Viejo, California. He came in with uh, uh, Brady Brett. For a first down, the Wildcats rush. It was Coulter that time. I was looking at the statistical data provided us by David Hirsch. He has got part of my question answered. 11 different Wildcat ball carriers tonight. That doesn't count the receivers. What? That's three fullbacks and five uh, tailbacks. Then they ran the reverse, so that's one. Uh, Receiver that ran the football. O'Brien pitches. 
about the quarterback. That's uh, 10. Who's the 11th one, David? That's Kirk King. That's right. There he is. That's sixth. Uh, Durant. There we are. Durant. Well, we got them all. Do I hear 12? We got a minute and 40 seconds. Maybe we'll get 12. Who's left? Just off the top of your head. <laughs> Boy, I'm not sure. Straight ahead goes Coulter, spun around, and then down. That'll bring up third down. Well, O'Brien could run the option and keep it. That would give us a, a 12. You know, one of the things that just dawned on me is, as I watch this clock run at 116, this has been a remarkably penalty-free football game. Arizona's concerned a little bit coming into the ball game. They had eight against Georgia Tech. I think uh, there was one in the second half. New Mexico State refused it. So that would be an aspect. They wanted to clear that up a little bit. Uh, well, when you look at this ball game, I don't they'll find some things that are wrong with it, but uh, as far as execution, that's as well as Arizona has executed in a number of years. Touche. Forty-one seconds and counting remaining in the game. Arizona, I believe uh, Dana Cooper now says 323 yards rushing. By the way, catch Dana. Tomorrow night, you'll have Dick Tomey on, the Dick Tomey Show on KTTU TV 18. Well, the Arizona has total offense. You know, we talk about the last ball, five ball games, counting the Georgia Tech game in the last four last year. They were over 419 yards per game average. So they've been increasing their yardage slowly. Well, Mr. Branch ran it last year. Yeah, he didn't put up his hand, so he got knocked down. Three seconds remain in the game. I'm not sure if they'll even have a chance to uh, snap a play. Well, they've been hard working all night long, all the way to the bitter end. Unless something written by Rod Serling occurs in the next uh, three seconds, Arizona will have it shut out their opponent. Their average points against per game will be at seven. 14 allowed last week down at Georgia Tech. Back into single digits for Arizona. Cliff better has chance for one play. Let's see how far he throws it. Whisk. Lots of blue shirts. Oh! <laughs> Quite work. Parnell had a chance for the interception, but not really necessary as the Wildcats and Dick Tomey are 2-0 in the 1994 campaign. They shut out New Mexico State University by a final score of 44-0. Pacific 10 conference play. Meanwhile, Jim Hess will take his team back into uh, one more uh, non-conference uh, contest next week at Texas El Paso. They're working their way home. They start in Gainesville, Florida. Come to Tucson next week. They'll be in El Paso, Texas. So Arizona dominates New Mexico State right from the get-go. In the very first scoring drive, they hooked up on a 57-yard pass play. To Richard Dyson, that pretty well set the uh, tone for the evening, Coach. Well, I think you're right. We've commented on great balance by Arizona, both running the football and uh, passing the football defense uh, as advertised. Uh, a big shutout. Arizona hit uh, New Mexico State. Very little rushing yardage. 45 at halftime. And not much more in the second half. Nothing victors tonight. We'll have to get to some of the other. Actually, the Pac-10 did have a pretty good day today overall. The only uh, surprise, well, I guess the only disappointments for the Pacific 10 Conference today was at Penn State. And then again at Evanston, Illinois. The Trojans of USC were pretty well slammed by Penn State. And at uh, Illinois, uh, in Illinois, at Evanston and Northwestern, the other Wildcats, Northwestern's Wildcats, they tied Stanford. And, of course, the Cardinal are the Wildcats' next opponent. Well, I think uh, to 
know what, before we even talk about that, let's go talk to the uh, the man of the hour. One of many tonight, but he got things going the right way. Richard Dice? Richard, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Obviously, you and Dan have uh, put it together now. Uh, you last year in uh, all of the football games you played, you had one touchdown pass. Tonight, you had a pair. Yeah, uh, I got to give credit to the guys up front and Danny. Um, you know, they gave him protection, and uh, Dan just put the ball right on the money. Richard, what, what changes have you p ascertained? You know, you came into this program last year as, as a true freshman. You ended up playing, and... and uh, you had a chance to work in this offensive scheme. What have you seen in the difference in the offense this year as compared to last year? Um, basically, I think uh, it's just maturity for us, really, because, you know, we're starting to pass a lot more. And uh, we're just trying to make everybody a threat on our, on our offense, whether it's the running backs, receivers, tight ends, everybody. Now, you had four receptions in the first half, one in the second. Was your game plan going in? You hadn't thrown to the wide receivers much against Georgia Tech. Did you feel you had to throw to you wide receivers down and fade patterns, or was that the game plan? Uh, kind of, you know, uh, it's kind of hard, you know, it just, we got to take what they give us. Um, there, there was really no game plan to throw to us, you know. Dan just hits whoever's open, and uh, it went well for us. Well, Richard, a great night for you and the Wildcats. Congratulations on the two touchdown receptions, and I hope that hair grows back soon. Thank you. Richard Dice with two TD receptions tonight. A big night for the Wildcats. And there you take a look at the first one. 56 yards that covered. And Coach, I guess uh, we mentioned on the air a few moments ago, but if you're a Wildcat fan, you follow Arizona football, you got to be pretty pleased with what you've seen so far tonight. Boy, you would. And I think uh, if you're looking for the kind of football that most football people like, you know, you like to see some passing, some running. Arizona predominantly in the previous years has been a, a running or rushing football team, 70% rushing the football, about 30 passing. Tonight it was pretty much even. Steven, although in the second half, uh, White ended up with throwing 20 passes, completed 11 right back to maybe around his 50%. But the first half, I think, was really impressive. And I think you saw the balance. They threw to all receivers. They threw short out of the backfield. They threw to the receivers downfield and out. And then, of course, the running football uh, looked as good as it has in the past. In fact, much better. So three tailbacks. Great experience there. I think as you look at this football game, you look what's ahead of you. Uh, again, Arizona's going to be a hard, hard team to play because of their good offense, uh, much improved offense, and then the defense looks as effective as it has been the past three years. Well, the Wildcats with 561 yards tonight. They'll take the week off, not for practice, obviously, but they do not have a game next week, and that's the bye week. And then in two weeks, they're in Palo Alto. That's where they will open up their Pac-10 season on the road against the Stanford Cardinal. Now, most of you know the story. Uh, the networks will make a choice sometime soon. We're not sure who will be with you, but the game will be seen one way or the other in this market. What are you looking for, this? What are you looking for from the Cardinal? Well, Stanford offensively is always strong, and they're a veteran team right now. Uh, they're a year older. They felt they were going to be better defensively, but I think after Northwestern today, uh, it looks like they're pretty in a similar mode. They're going to score a lot of points. Last year against Arizona, they could have won the football game here in and outscoring the Wildcats. Arizona, again, uh, with their defense, will probably give the Cardinal a little bit of trouble, but that's a more experienced team. They should be better. But again, that's going to be a crucial game. Stanford has San Jose next week in a big rivalry game. Coach Ralston coming back, a former Stanford coach. And uh, that was a tough game for Stanford last year. And they got to play them before they play Arizona. They need a win badly to get ready for Arizona. So that's kind of a crucial game for them. Northwestern, I'm sure, is a disappointment after Notre Dame beats them pretty readily. All right. Big night for the Wildcats. Their home opener. They're 2-0 and on the season. Once again, our final score. Arizona 44, New Mexico State nothing. For the coach, Bruce Larson, I'm Dave Sitton saying good night, everybody.